Welcome back to the 9A Bowling Club here in Wellington. We're about to get underway for round three of the National Inter Club Bowls 3-5 finals and the match we're going to be featuring is that of the Raumati game, the Raumati Blues uh, from the Kapiti po- uh, Coast and they'll have leading for them Mike Semenoff leading Trudy Nicholson at number two and Rob Nicholson skipping. And they're up against the Hastings Hornets side where we've got Tenneth Pottinger will be leading Merv Brown at number two, Dean Drummond uh, is skipping in this uh, round three match. And with me again, I have got Kevin Gledhall with me. And we'll bring you this play is just getting underway here. I th- yes, it is play just getting underway here on end one of five. And this is the first set at the 9A Bowling Club. So another another round robin match uh, underway here, uh, Kevin. So uh, who knows? Of these two teams, because I don't know much. Well, I know a bit about the Hooks Bay boys, not much about the Cavity guys, except John Macbeth giving rude signals to me on the way through. Of course, Macbeth, the president of uh, the Ramadi Club. So let's hope that uh, we have a good third round match. I'm sure we're in for a good match uh, this afternoon or at one o'clock today. Mike Simonoff is the lead for the Ramadi Blues. He just bowled a toucher, his first or his second bowl. As we now watch the first ball of Merv Brown, the uh, number two for the Hastings Hornet, just put a deep ball in there. And we should be now coming up to Trudy Nicholson for the Raumati Blues. She's bowling her first ball, and it's going to be short by quite a bit. She didn't get, quite get the right weight, or in fact, the line for that ball. She'll be disappointed with her first effort. Merv Brown lining up his second delivery. And he's preparing to bowl on the forehand. He's taken a good arc towards the critty this time. But it is going to be a little bit deep, a little bit too heavy. Just over the head though. So, of course, the, the third round, and if you go to the Bowls New Zealand website, or the uh, yeah, Bowls New Zealand website, there will be updates round by round of the uh, of with the status of where teams are at, etc. Um, I am delighted, though, that I happen to know a bit of a story that's come through, that the Milton Bowling Club from way down the south, the third oldest bowling club, in fact, in New Zealand, have uh, won two from two. So uh, a great start from uh, the Milton Club. As you can see, the Jack and Bowls sitting there right in the middle of the circle. And for those who uh, of course, want to watch this, or friends, neighbours, whatever, if you just go to the Bowls New Zealand website, and uh, they will con- if they direct you to one of their platforms whereby you can watch this live coverage of round three. And of course, we'll be with you right throughout the, the afternoon. Uh, today, oh, oh sorry, this is round four, sorry, uh, and uh, rounds five, six, seven and eight will be played, and uh, I'll be uh, having a spell there, and Brenton Van Nisseroy will be in later on this afternoon, be a delighted man of course, after the Phoenix victory last night, to make sure that the Phoenix have uh, made their way through to the playoffs in the A-League. So, yeah, Brenta Van Nisseroy, who lives close by here, in fact, at 9A, uh, will be here to bring you that <coughs> fifth round coverage. And then tomorrow I'll be back on live in the morning. And John Macbeth will also uh, be coming to do commentary as well uh, tomorrow. So, as uh, Kevin rightly said, there is the bowl locked right on top of the jack. The uh, <coughs> the Raumati South Bowl, or the... Raumati Blues, and by goodness, their shoots are very blue, blend in with the uh, scenery here. As Drummond, who drove with his first, playing with reaching weight with his second, just going to go by, about a bowl wide of the target. Of course, the, only the one down, so... Yeah. It certainly shows that Dean Drummond, as a skipper, is not afraid to drive. Very the bowl was... Um Clearly the shot from the Ramadi Blues, it was the very first bowl of Mike Simonoff. And uh, there was a good option there to try and drive that off and just trail the jack slightly back to his uh, uh, back bowls. Yeah, very quick, shortly, we'll, you'll see on screen. So that's uh, 
Two shots to Ramati on this, the first end of five of the first set here at the uh, Bowls, National Inter Club Bowls 3 5 finals. And very quickly, uh, we'll have both sections up. Uh, you'll come up on the screen and uh, we'll be able to give you a quick update of where progress sits. And there we've got section one, Milton sitting at the top from South Otago, Stokes Valley with two, the Nelson Spirit also with two. Blenheim Sons, who have already commentated one of their games, they've got one from two. SF Patataru from the Waikato, the Coromandel Muscles have had one from three. Birkenhead Stingers yet to get on the board, as are the Clyde Scorchers from Central Otago. So leading section one, the top four at this stage are Milton from South Otago, Stokes Valley from Wellington, the Nelson Spirit and Blenheim Sons. And in the other section... We'll update you there quickly, and we can see there it is, Dobson from the West Coast, the team we had first round this morning, Dobson. And the big surprise came in the very strong Elmwood side. They dropped a game this morning. Waipawa of uh, Southland are also there with three. Nine of Wellington, who have uh, won one of their two. Auckland Originals have had one. So the uh, Taranaki side, the Inglewood side, Hastings Hornets have uh, played three games, only the one win. And the Raumati Blues, who we're featuring, both of these two teams now, are yet to get on the board. So, leading Section 2, isn't that ironical? Section 1 has been led by Milton. Section 2 has been led, led by Dobson. What a great start to the event for those two smaller centres. The Elmwood Saints side in second side. Uh, Wai, Wai Hopi from Southland in thirds and Nainai in fourth. So, that's how it sits in round 2. And we're back now to the live action here at Nainai in this uh, round Four match between that of the Ramati Blues on the Cabinet Coast and the uh, Hastings Hornets. And in the first end went by and we saw the Ramati side open with a two. So here now is Tanith Potager, the student pilot, commercial pilot on her backhand, formerly played here in Wellington. Very, very deliberate delivery. Promising young, one of the younger players looks on a good line. This ball from Pollager as it breaks in towards the circle. Now there's a good ball from Tanith Pollager going to sit right in on that inner circle, right in behind the jack. Good ball from the Hastings Hornets lead. Excellent ball from uh, Tanith Pollager, as you said there. Her second ball, only about you know less than a mat length uh, beside the jack. She'll be happy with that. So here we have. Trudy Nicholson playing her first bowl on this, the second end. I see the, the back gets turned very quickly on that one. So, uh, yeah, you can see there. Uh, and, you know, I, I say again, Kevin, as we've said right throughout the uh, coverage so far today, is, you know, it's that lead first bowl effectiveness to get right on top of the jack or as close as possible. That certainly sets the head up uh, for, uh, the, you know, this time it's the Hastings Hornets with Tunneth Pottinger who is drawn right on top of the jack and Merv Brown looks to have a pretty good second his bowl too and it's going to sit inside the circle sitting like jack level the only issue with that is sitting two bowls parallel jack level just it does have a good resting base there for um Trudy Nicholson on the backhand to sit up on top of those bowls here is Nicholson now on her backhand and she'll be trying to get uh, as you said try and rest on those two bowls of the Hastings Hornets team but her arc seems to be a little bit too wide and she's not going to come up to the results she would like. No, uh, weight was pretty good just uh, but just a fraction on the wide side so here's a great opportunity for Merv Brown to really build the head strongly for his uh, Hastings uh, Hornets side on the backhand and this man believe me Merv Brown one of the great workers of the Hastings club myself and Tamara we were fortunate enough to be down there last year for one of the champion champion events. And uh, by goodness, this guy was a great workhorse for the club. And really, uh, we've seen it with uh, you know, the Hastings Hornets playing at the indoor complex uh, in Hastings. And got an abundance of top Hawks Bay players there. As the skips change over, Dean Drummond, of course, one of the up and coming younger players uh, in New Zealand. Very, very promising player is uh, Drummond. Of course, has played for the North Island in the past in the North-South match. And would you agree, Kevin, early on? Isn't it great to see top of the pop after two rounds? Milton oh. and uh, and the West Coast. <laughs> yes, indeed. Uh, two South Island clubs, as you mentioned, uh, with you know very few numbers playing the game. And 
they've come through and uh, leading the competition after two rounds, having two wins. It's great for their club, great for their supporters and for the players involved. So well done. So I'm sure those down the south in uh, Dobson will be delighted uh, with their results to date. And of course also uh, down in the south again, watching closely. I know they're watching, following the, the, the uh, side from South Otago as well. And great to see them getting away to such good starts in this event. As we see Dean Drummond endearing to draw to the count is going to do so. Just sits to the circle. And this, you know, all they can do here is trying to rest on those, what is second and third? I think anything else is that low percentage shot. And that's the shot, of course. Now we see Rob Nicholson on the draw endeavouring to try and save the situation. He's on a pretty good line, but how far is it going to cut away under the head? It's going to cut away completely. And the two shots they dropped on the first end were very quickly recovered from the Hornet side, holding a good number here. And with a, another bowl to come from Dean Drummond on the backhand is the young Hawks Bay player. Winner last week. I think that was the champion and champion triples. So he's drumming again. Very, very good carpet player is this guy. Yeah. There it is. It's the whole lot. Six uh, six shots there by the uh, Hastings Hornets team. Each of their players, the lead, the two and the skip, bowled exceptionally good bowls to put the pressure right on the uh, Ramadi Blue side. The uh, president of the Real Matty has just walked past me. The Honourable John Macbeth, not impressed with that second end result. And John, of course, will be sitting here tomorrow in the commentary position. One of the doyens of sports broadcasting in New Zealand. And so too is Brenda Van Nisseroy, who will be here for the next round and the other games this afternoon. And great opening bowl there from Pottinger, right in behind the jack. So it's the turn of Rob Nicholson. Big pardon, <laughs> Mike Simonoff is the lead for the Ramadi Blues team to bowl his first bowl down on this, the third end. And it's not a bad bowl, just over the head. Skip is happy with that delivery. Well, after dropping a six on the on the uh, second end, there's a very good response there from uh, Mike Semenov. And here's Tanith Potajip on the backhand. That really deliberate, that's very deliberate de delivery from Potajip. The first, and it's sitting uh, right on the centre line. How much adjustment has she made with the weight here? There's a pretty good bowl as well. Just going to finish lower the jack, but... The good thing is all of those three bowls have taken their way right to the centre line. Now, Marker, you'll see Sue Wei again indicating that it is what the one shot to Ramati. So on the back end is Mike Semenov, who played such a good bowl with his first. And this line of the bowl, this looks just depends the weight, how far it's going to go by. Had good just. He'd be happy with that, though. Stays up on board, which it does. Just sits outside the number. Mike, uh, and we'll see. Merv Brown. He's got a couple of feet to draw the shot. On the backhand. And Tanith Pottinger. Pottinger coming into this side late. With uh, Natasha Grimshaw becoming... Uh, COVID positive, having to withdraw at the last minute. So uh, fortunate to get Tanith Pottinger on board. Formerly used to play in Wellington, now plays out at Jury Hill in Whanganui. So As Trudy Nicholson bowls her first bowl on this, the third end. She's number two for the Raumati Blues side from Capity Coast. It's uh, arcing towards the head, but Kevin just not going to get inside that inner circle. So, Brown with his first bowl, Brown's first bowl, just a fraction heavy into the ditch on the back end. Just needs to draw into the circle. And 
How long is this bolt? If it holds up long enough, it's got a chance to get inside. Needs to get inside the pottage of bowl. Not going to. It's a roll on it. Not enough. So 6-2 to the Hastings Hornets over Ramadi. The Ramadi Blues as we play in three of five. And this is the round four match here today. Ramadi Blues holding the shot as Trudy Nicholson on her forehand trying to add to the count. As you can see from the uh, far end, the skips applauding that shot. So that's getting possibly another shot for the uh, Ramadi Blues team. Just falling short of that. Has to be really inside the circle to be in the measure or counting uh, position. There's Sue Way out. Very vigilant. Mark. And congratulations to Sue Way as well, by the way. No, she can't hear me. But uh, congratulations to Sue Wei, who has been selected uh, to be an official uh, at the forthcoming Commonwealth Games in Birmingham. And she'll be winging her way as part of the contingent, the uh, match officials at Leamington on Spa. And uh, a great worker is Sue for uh, Wellington Bowls. And congratulations on her selection as one of the officials for the, uh, the forthcoming Commonwealth Games. You watch Drummond's Bowl coming down towards... Not going to come back all the way to get to the counting bowl. That of Mike Simon off the lead. And I think really to be fair here that Rob Nicholson, I'm a bit surprised that he's playing on that forehand side. He'll might make a mockery of it. I mean, because I don't know whether he can get around the front bowl with enough draw to get to the counting area. As we watch this bowl of his coming down towards the, the circle. But we just... Well, it needs to be a bowl out wider because of where that other bowl sits out there, that being the bowl of Trudy Nicholson, and just makes it that more difficult to get into a counting position. Now, Drummond, you'll be quite happy if you can get down to that shot bowl to sit on it, sit inside it. Coming down towards the head now again, just looks to be slightly on the wide side. Gonna just run into one of the uh, Ramati Blues bowls. And I... Let's see if he's going to persevere. He is going to persevere as uh, Rob Nicholson on that forehand side. And just a challenge to get that dead draw around the front bowls to get to, or through the port to get to a counting position. On a good line, though, is Nicholson. Just going to question the weight as it comes down. Is it going to get past it and does? So they've taken one shot oh, out. Just the one? Just the one shot there for the uh, Ramadi Blues. So good scoring in for them. It is six points to two, to, uh, six points to three to the Hastings team currently. So we're playing, of course, today. There is uh, rounds today. There is, uh, well, there's a number of eight rounds, in fact, today. We're in at round four now. And further, further four rounds to be played this afternoon then tomorrow we have got another full day of uh, rounds 9 to 16 uh, tomorrow and then semi a quarter final semi final and finals here getting underway at 10 a.m. here on Sunday morning at the beautiful 9i complex as we watch this first bowl of Mike Semenov's and he'll be happy with that delivery it's within the circle no more than perhaps uh a mat length just over the head as well. Good first delivery. So here's now Potager on the backhand. Good opening bowl there, as uh, said by uh, Kevin, the opening bowl of Mike Semenov. And Potager staying on her backhand sides. It's coming down towards the circle now. You know, I really count the circle as, the, as literally the centre line because you're going to be in the scoring zone, anything in the circle. About uh, a metre and a bit short there was Tanith Pottager. So Mike Semenov now wanting to just endeavour to play a similar bowl to that of his first. Draws alongside that, but that's going to be under the line. Certainly appears so, Kevin. Under the line, he might get a quick uh, nudge on the front bowl to bring that up. But yes, it was definitely under the line. And now that'll leave the Pottager bowl as a uh, shot. Uh, the, the rings on the, in the circle really are a very, very good measure because you can 
uh, get an idea from there. And uh, paying the price there was uh, Mike Simonoff for being under the line with a wee bit of weight and just running into the bowl of uh, Tenneth Pottinger and promoting it into the head. This looks a good bowl here from Pottinger. This looks a what good correction here from the lead from the Hastings Horn. It's just going to go by the circle, but still in that good position in behind the head. Yeah, having a good position bowl is crucial because, um, you know, the calibre of the players we have here for this weekend are quite capable of trailing the jack just over the uh, draw weight and taking balls, uh, taking their, their bowl to a position where they may have bowls over the kitty. So here's a good-looking bowl here from Trudy Nicholson. It's just got to get past the polish of bowls. Going to do so. Is it going to do so? No, it doesn't. Just pulls up a bowl short, but we're certainly... On line to get right to that centre line. Well, the centre part of the circle, I should say. Merv Brown's now going to follow that bowl. Oh, uh, he's, so he's going to stay on his... You know, he's coming, following the bowl of Trudy Nicholson to play just slightly underneath that on the draw. Yeah, he'll certainly be looking towards getting a bit of a plant on the bowl at the front of the... Uh, he's played this ball, he played this well, has Brown played this very, very well. This ball is of oh, that move Brown. You'll see the just drawing in the front there to the front of the ring. And Trudy Nicholson now having to change to her backhand. Leading six to three, only in four. And I don't know whether this ball will come all the way back. And I'm just wondering. Kevin, whether the uh, Hastings Hornet side are just thinking that that, although there's a bowl there in front where that draw might be a, a, a generate more sort of uh, accommodating draw to the jack, and perhaps because on the other hand, of course, you've got to just be outside that front bowl of uh, Mike Semenoff's. It appears that uh, Dean Drummond is the skip of the Hastings Hornets. Has caught him on the forehand to try and just bump up or get those two balls a little bit closer to the kitty, but on this occasion, uh, Merv Brown not being able to deliver what the skip asked of him. Well, it's not all bad because if you take the other side of the rink, it's making that, that the draw the draws exceptionally tight now um, because one would think if you get around those two front balls on that the backhand, you're going to finish on the outer side of the ring of the... Oh, the, the the circle there because the scoring position is inside, right inside the centre line, uh, the, the centre part of the ring as you can see there. The of course the Real Madrid side have got the advantage where they've got that Mike Semenov bowl, which is in fact third shot, and that's interesting now. Yeah, Rob Nicholson electing to play what I think is the best opportunity hand where you can play with some forcing weight through the counting bowls, but he's going to be under the line. You're going to get a slide. No, he's not. Goes by, but to me, that certainly was the percentage shot well, it'll to be play. a very difficult shot on the backhand, Kevin. It was very tight with those two bowls out on the wing hand, wasn't it? Well, be... uh, but it's, it gives Dean Drummond the opportunity. He does play with a wider drawing bowl to actually finish inside that, that, that the circle. If he got inside that second ring of the circle, uh, he could well be in a scoring position. How's the weight now for Drummond as it comes in towards the circle? How's the weight from Drummond? How's the weight from Drummond here? And going to sit right a toucher. Excellent bowl from Dean Drummond as a skip of the Hastings Hornet side. Came around those two wing bowls out on the uh, far side. Nice drawing arc into the kitty. Well so here yeah. Rob Nicholson trying to make reduction. It's holding up longer, this one. It's holding up longer, this one. And would have cut the count, I'd say. Will have cut the count, one would imagine. Definitely the Dean Drummond bowl is the shot. But I think one thing that highlights here, uh, Kevin, to me, is that um, and it's interesting for the carpet, which Dean Drummond plays a lot of bowls on carpet. He's got a... He's got a, 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 a wider, he's got a bigger drawing bowl, and you'll see how far that last bowl of Drummond's came back on that backhand. Just sort of just crawled its way into the circle, but it can certain pl certainly play uh, with, it, with, it, with a different line. Well, he's come on the forehand uh, now just because he already has three, two shots clearly in the head, and he's just trying to give himself a protection bowl as they... 
look to uh, measure now. Out comes the measure, definitely the Dean Drummond Bowl, which is definitely the shot. As we come to the completion of end four of five. And going to the front bowl first. Now coming around to the side bowl. Just on the outer side of the rink, putting the tape upon that. And that look, that's not, it's interesting. That's going back again, closer than what one thought there. Now come back to the Jack Level Bowl. So we'll see in it was two. Sue Su Wei indicating that it was two to the Hastings Hornets. So that takes them out to an 8 3 tidy handy lead going into this uh, last end. An interesting. Uh, yeah, they've changed the length as well. They're right up on that. So they're on the second, the back of the end circle, aren't they? Are they not? I'm just trying to get it. Yes, they are, obviously. So good opening bowl here from Pottinger. Trying to finish just over the jack, just outside the circle. But that's a good start. It's in around that metre. 8-3, the Hastings Hornets leading the Ramati Blues. Mike Timonoff now on his... Backhand. And the pressure comes on the uh, Ramadi side now. That's a five point differential, and they're in the last end of the uh, first set. And there's quite a bit of pressure now to try and, you know, get there and, and cut the score down because differentials count at the end of the day, don't they? Well, first count, of course, is wins and then sets. So, you know, the, you know, the advantage of winning a match uh, two sets to nil certainly uh, carries an advantage for you. Um, and no, I like that Potager's delivery to me on this sort of surface. Just leans itself to a good arc at the finish. As we've seen Julie that now, just at jack level. And it really comes back to, to, I know these things get very technical, but it's the, at her point of delivery or where her arm is. It's Her arm is out on the arc line. It's, it's not inside the body, therefore... There's every chance that it's going to then draw draw back towards the centre. Whereas if you that, that arm, especially on carpet, if you've got it too tightly inside, you're just going to disappear. And to me, the telling point right now is the delivery style that Tanith Puttage has got on her backhand is uh, assisting the Hastings Hornets uh, uh, in, setting, in setting the head up for themselves. Oh, very good point, Kevin. Uh, she certainly got her line fairly correct in the first uh, set of this game and she's been leading very well. So it allows then Merv Brown to change his hand coming down towards the circle now and will finish just slightly under the line but it's in the it's uh, in that in, in that counting area although there's still plenty of room in front of it but it's just bowls in front you just got to just makes it Psychologically, it's about where you judge your line to get that draw underneath to the bowl. So here is now Trudy Nicholson, the number two for the Ramati Blues, and she's got that good, but hasn't got the weight. Yeah, pretty unfortunate there. The line looked pretty good. If she could just have a little bit more weight, it's a drawable shot. There's not too many um, difficulties in drawing in there. All the bowls are a little bit away well, from the kitty. What this has all of a sudden done for the Ramadi side, unfortunately, uh, uh, given it sort of eliminated one hand uh, for them as Brown, uh, as Merv Brown now goes to the back end, uh, holding three shots as the uh, uh, Hastings Hornets side. And this will be another one as it comes in towards the head. And is going to get a touch on the jack, sits in behind it, and that becomes a challenge. It certainly does, and uh, as you can see on the screen, there's four bowls clearly to the Hastings Hornets, and I believe they were the team that actually tipped over the onward um, team this morning. Kevin. Yeah, is it, ha ha the, it was uh, Ramati that beat? The Hastings Hornets, I believe, beat the onward I, I knew onward team. lost. And, and 
But you know, as we know, early on in these, you know, these with uh, seven or eight rounds of post-section play, you know, there's uh, there, and and rightfully so, there's going to be upsets, and we've we've seen that already, and that's been rewarded uh, for the likes of, uh, you know, the, the the two teams that we spoke about before. Only, only two rounds gone, of course, but you know, Milton and Dobson uh, from the way down the south and uh, the west coast have uh, started off strongly. But this going into the fifth head, a uh, fifth uh, end is a strong end to that for the uh, Hastings side. They can't lose the set, but what it can do, it can, as Kevin rightly said, it gives them a set advantage, and plus, of course, it builds up their differential as well. Because in talking with uh, uh, Stephen Beale here before, um, when we get down to the nitty gritty, um, uh, differential sets, all of those things will be coming into, uh, you can guarantee it, that it will be. There's another bowl from Dean Drummond, nestles its way in towards the counting area. And the Rob Nicholson, fortunately, except for the very first end, has really been forced to try and save situations, not score, really. It's been about trying to save, not draw, not to do much else. But he's having a great attempt here to get to the shot bowl as the uh, skip from the... Uh, Ramadi Blues, but just going to go by because he had to have weight on to give himself a chance to get to that bowl. And because Dean Drummond's under no pressure at all, is he? Certainly not, and he's just going to try and add to the count. There's currently five um, Hastings Hornets bowls closer than any bowl that the uh, Ramadi boys have put up, or the Ramadi team. But he's, he's coming up a bit short, but as you said earlier, that forehand then, or maybe not, it's back to the centre line, but they can only come on the backhand. Yeah, it's it's one of those ends really where you know if you if you score, go and buy a truckload of lotto tickets because it's a very very challenging proposition for the Capity side trying to get to the jack and go all the way through. Or well, they took a bowl out, that'll be a five, I would say, because they knocked out I think one of the. Uh, the the uh, Hastings Hornets bowls. We'll see in a moment. It's the end of this, the first set. I can I can see four. They're looking at maybe six, Kevin. Well, I thought one bowl got no, got knocked out. There's four is the count. Up this. Four is it? That's what's been indicated okay. to me. So the first set has been won by the Hastings Hornets and uh, quite comfortably in the end, 12 points to three. 12-3, right as Kevin rightly said in that first set to the Hastings Hornets and they'll be happy with that. Now see again, Potagier has brought the mat up and has brought a line in though. It's not really like her, she's way under the line with this and also wanted another metre of weight. Yeah, she'd be disappointed with that first bowl because she's bowled very well in the first end and has certainly uh, set the... Uh, you know, tempo for the team to follow, and uh, she was disappointed with that delivery. Of course, you win the first set 12 3, means very little because you've got to win the second set as well. Um, so, it's uh, from Hastings' point of view, after already dropping a couple of games, it's important for them that they get this get this particular match and get away well. Mike Seminoff drawn a reasonably good outside the circle, though, lacked a half a metre of weight, so. Tanith Potager will try to be improving upon her line and weight. And you see that down, head up, you see that arm. Just, I'm, I'm sure a golf coach would be pretty happy with looking at that uh, that hand delivery because you get rewarded for it. And there it is. Perfect yeah. delivery, just touching the uh, kitty as Dean Drummond comes forward to uh, mark the ball. A great correction, which is what bowls is all about. They've got two bowls to correct with the second. Get your first one close and put it in behind on the second one. So on the backhand here now is Mike Simonoff after Trudy Tennis Potterjip had played a rough first bowl, but certainly made that correction with a second. And really there we saw Mike Simonoff was a wee bit on the search. He was a wee bit on that look for the jack situation. So if that being the case, you know, I'm sure Dean Drummond won't mind if if uh, if Merv Brown draws and he's a, a meter over the head. I'm pretty sure that he won't be too concerned really. 
because obviously there's going to be a bit of search and go on for the jackal bowl. That's way under the line. That bowl. and psychological thing there, whereas you know you try to play to where that bowl is out on the side there, and let it work underneath it. And uh, in that case, we saw Merv Brown literally deliver the bowl straight up on the line, straight at, under that line, and that's why it disappeared. And now we'll see Trudy Nicholson. Trying to make amends, and again, that's going to be way under Far the... Far too short. She won't be happy with that one there. Her delivery just wasn't... She didn't take her arm out and get a nice follow-through, and as it appears, well, as it shows, it was a short ball. So on the backhand again now is Merv Brown. After the Hastings Hornets won the first set by 12 shots to three. Bit of the line here from... Uh, uh, from Merv Brown as it comes down past the jack now, how far is it going to run towards the, and runs right down towards the number, sits just literally under the number, the ditch, oh, the ditch, He'll be here. It's, uh, that's fine down there, holding the shot, here is now um, Trudy Nicholson, and well, he's certainly got this, this bowl's out on a better arc here from Nicholson, this bowl's got a chance as it comes in towards the head now, needs to be under this, going to get a slide, is it? Yes it will, will it be enough? No it won't, there's only one roll away from uh, getting into a, the uh, counting area. But she made the necessary correction Kevin, which is what all bowlers do if they you know, bowl one that is not so good, and she'd be happy with that second bowl and it's a confidence booster for her team. So one down as the skips change over on this, the first end of the second set here of round four at the National Interclub Bowls 3-5 finals here at uh, the Nainai Complex. Dean Drummond, very deliberate in his pre-shot routine as he delivers, delivers on his backhand. Just trying to add to the count, coming inside the bowl of uh, Trudy Nicholson. I'm not sure if he's got enough weight though, but it's coming towards the head. But it's probably going to fall up just a little bit short, but a great line. That's another bowl on the head for the the, the Hastings Hornets, which is, uh, which is important at this time. As Rob Nicholson is the skip, he delivers his... First bowl of his two that he has. He has two bowls. Each player has two bowls. There's a pretty good attempt here from the uh, Ramadi skip and just going to drop outside the circle. But it was, uh, yeah, it, it was a pretty good effort there from the uh, Ramadi skip. Certainly was, as uh, Dean Drummond is weighing up his options, uh, listening to his number two, Merv Brown, as to what. Shot selection he should have. He's choosing the backhand. Taking time to get everything right as he delivers this bowl. He's on the run. He's trying, trying to play the second shot right out of the head for a number. And didn't do so. Rob Nicholson now is the skip for Ramati, uh, Ramati Blues. Coming on his backhand. Trying to get his bowl to get in closer to the jack than he's delivered. Just struggling to get that extra metre and a half. So the Hastings Hornets open the second set with a one after winning the first set by 12 shots to three. And starting off the winning side, or winning the very first end. We're interested to see what length here. Tanith Puttajip, uh, the jack's been placed, and it's right down on the furthest most, right down on the two metre, the uh, two metre mark. Here's Tanith Puttajip now on her backhand, and again got that arm out on that very good line. And yeah, just take note, people, because. Sure, it's not right on the jack, I understand that, but if you look at where the bowl was coming to, uh, and that all comes about because of the delivery, and with such a precise, deliberate delivery by Tanith Pottager, one gets rewarded if one, of course, has the weight. So, 
Mike Semenoff now trying to uh, better or match the bowl of Tunneth uh, Pottinger. The difficulty here, of course, given it so often happens, is where you get a bowl that finishes at metre, out in, just out in front. Um, uh, you know, you have to get around it with your next bowl, and so often you can just unintentionally just put that metre of weight on and you'll uh, disappear um, into the into the ditch. So Pottinger endeavouring to improve on her first. And it's got more weight on for sure. And how far is it going to go? That's going to go into the ditch. Yes, it does. Just rolls into the ditch. So here's the big opportunity. And this is second end for Mike Semenov. Just concentrate. All you've got to concentrate on is just get it beating the last bowl. It's all he's got to do. And electing to change his hand, which I, you know, I'm he'll more than likely draw the shot, but that. Uh, there was no real, not really a need to because there's still plenty of drawing room around that side but here comes the bowl of Mike Semenoff and it's going to finish just outside the circle, Jack level yeah, know. that was a surprise uh, Kevin, I thought he may have stayed on his backhand too because he'd already played on the backhand for his first bowl and he didn't have to make too much adjustment to come around that bowl but that's the way it is, he played on his forehand and he didn't quite get the right line or the length. So here now is uh, Merv Brown on the end two of five of the second set. It's a narrower line. How far is that going to finish outside the jack or get to the jack? And it's just going to go by more than likely. They had a yard, extra weight on. So I'm not going to say it counts because there's a lot of bowls to come yet and there's nothing really what I would call close at this stage. 1-0 to the Hastings Hornets and it doesn't like it. The delivery was Trudy Nicholson. You saw the old arm and head come up, which is always a telling sign. You don't, you don't like it. And I just wonder whether, or well, now I'm sure we're going to see move Brown. And I think he's uh, going to the backhand. It's definitely a far better option of uh, trying to get, because I'm picking this is one of those ends. First one to get one close and put it on the scoreboard. Rightio, I was watching this bowl coming into the head of Merv Brown. He does have a good arc on the bowl. It's up to his weight now. It's, he's trying to get behind the bowl of Natasha. Sorry, Tunneth Pottinger. Just wasn't quite able to do that. Oh, well, lacked a yard of weight at the finish. It was on the line, that's for sure. And this is one of those heads that, you know, uh, is, is anybody's head. Yeah, it's certainly a loose end, isn't uh, it? From, well, uh, the Trudy Nicholson might take advantage of this if he grabs the jack and does grab the jack. But, of course, it just steers the jack back to that first bowl of uh, Merv Browns, which was sitting just outside the circle. And that will be the shot. You can see it sitting there. The jack got moved outside the circle. And the lightly coloured bowl of Merv Browns will be the shot, and the bowl of Trudy Nicholson's just sitting outside it as a second shot. Remembering the Hastings Hornets winning the first set by 12 shots to three. That trail of the jack that was made then just shows the benefit of having bowls over the head. The jack moved across and took the shot away from the Ramati team and took it back to the Hastings Hornets team. So here's now Drummond who has been part of a New Zealand age group sides over the year. Is this, has Dean Drummond, he has the weight as it comes down. And it looks to be on a good line, this bowl of Drummond's. Have a look at this as it gets down towards the centre line. Not going to count third shot, but certainly in and around it. Dean Drummond, of course, part of the Professional Bowls Association as well, where everything's played on carpet. And uh, has represented New Zealand, uh, the New Zealand PBA at overseas uh, UK based events. So, certainly a very, very proficient player on the carpet. Good response here from Rob Nicholson. This is a great bowl here from Nicholson and sits inside the bowl on the draw. Well played from the Capity, uh, the uh, Capity skip, the Ramadi Blues side. And that was a must bowl that they had to get into the head, and he certainly did that. Just came inside the shot bowl of the Hastings Hornets team, and he'd be very pleased with that. So, Dean Drummond. I'm sure we'll endeavour to follow that. 
It bowled off Rob Nicholson's. Nice speed delivery from Dean Drummond there on the backhand. He's got a very, very good delivery. He's trying to no, get a plant a, on one of the front bowls no, to bring it up. That's the pottage of bowl. It's not going to make any difference. And that'll be yeah, a bowl to come, but definitely it will be the Raumati side, the Raumati Blues, who will at least tie everything up, if not go to a 2-1 lead in this, the completion of the second end. And again, this is on a pretty good line. How far is it going to come back? This is on well played again here from... Uh, Rob Nicholson, ball. this is fantastically played from the Kapiti skip. That was two magnificent bowls. And that was a skipper's knock, if ever you saw one. Two bowls that has given his team a 2-1 lead in the second set of five. And here's well, the... Five ends. My relief commentator, a bit to... Uh, we'll step in after this game. Brenda Van Nistelrooy. Happy man, Phoenix win last night. So 2-1 to the Ramati Blues after two ends of five. After the Hastings Hornets winning the first set um, by 12 shots to three. So as rightly said by Kevin, we saw two superb bowls there from uh, Rob Nicholson. The Ramati Blues skipped through within centimetres to uh, score the two shots. So now it's up to his side to really build on uh, the confidence and advantage that he gave with those two uh, finely drawn bowls. Match been brought up, and here's Pottinger on the mat. You'll see the first bowl of Mike Simonoff. It's about a metre lower the jack. You'll see that clearly in a moment. Here is Tanith Pottinger on her backhand. Needs to get past this front bowl and get down towards the jack. Is it going to do so? Yes, it will. We'll finish literally jack level, just slightly lower the jack, but a good opening bowl there from the Hastings Hornets uh, lead. And more than likely will force the change of hands for Mike Simonoff, the Ramati lead. And that is, he's going to the back end, where you and I both thought the last end uh, really, uh, Kevin, he'd have been had more, I would say, percentage-wise. Looked a better option. He's got this bowl head on. How's the weight, though? Weight looks a bit heavy as it goes by. Yes, it is. So yeah, that bowl just not, you know, biting, as I might say, towards the kitty, just holding its line well, and just bowling well, forward. Well, mainly, I would more than, because he had that extra yard and a bit of weight as well, so, um, you know, more than likely held out, didn't have that line finish into the, into the jack or centre line, so... Here is Tanith Potajep, again with her second bowl. Coming down towards the circle now. And another good bowl from the Hastings Hornets lead. Going to finish in jack level, just sit again, just on that outer ring of the, of the uh, circle. And that, that, that uh, sort of sets your side up for a very, very good start to the end as we play in three of five with Ramati. The Ramity Blues leading by two shots to one. And this bowl here of Trudy Nicholson's is going to be under the head. Now, this is where they must capitalise, really, uh, Merv Brown, making sure that he finishes on the other side of the head, uh, Kevin, and he can make life very, very difficult for the uh, Ramity Blues side. Well, they've certainly kept the pressure on the uh, Ramity team throughout both uh, the first uh, set and this set as well. They're playing very consistent bowls. Each of their teammates are... Helping each other. If one hasn't got it close to the kitty, the other bowler's coming after that hair. Yeah, well, this is really this is the sort of areas that you want to be in now because yes. you know, do you draw in, do you draw under, you draw around, and 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 of course you can uh, you try and draw under. There's every chance your, your bowl's going to disappear under the head. So here's now Trudy Nicholson, three down as to come to the end of getting down to the third end completion. This might get a slide. No, it's not playing. Well, that was a strange shot. I'm not it, sure. It, it appeared like she was trying to trail the kitty. Well, and it seemed a bit uh, very yeah. hard to do it playing down there. One would think, but so here now is 
Merv Brown. Now, this could be one of those ends that could um, have a big bearing on the outcome uh, of the match here, given this, this end, and especially if this bowl finishes on the centre line. So, as you can see, what's happening here, it's cutting off the shot options, isn't it? For it certainly is. The, the shot options of the Ramadi team, yeah, either the forehand or the backhand, if it bowls against them, they could hit and and, uh, and not be what the result they'd like. Well, it's one of those heads where you could be just a couple of inches out and you, <laughs> you get nothing. So, I just wonder whether he'll play on that backhand and try and get the jack in the ditch. I just... I wonder if that's an option because there's no bowls like over over the head, so you know it's a one-shot scoring chance uh, uh, for the Raumati side. They can't build a big head, so I think I think in my view, you're looking for the jack. Although you fall down, you can to try and draw. Here is Rob Nicholson trying to do just that. Might be fortunate and sit on a bowl here. Might be fortunate and sit on a bowl here. And he is. <laughs> yes, he has got the shot. He came uh, directly onto the Merv Brown bowl and clipped it out and has rested for his team to gain the shot. And yeah, Drummond will be playing for the bowl, that's for sure. Just a matter of what weight he uses, but he'll certainly be playing for the bowl. He's down looking at it. And we'll see what's happened in but a moment and there's the jack down towards there and that's the bowl of has that moved Brown's bowl I'll see what so here's Rob Nicholson on the backhand and that two is going to be under the line, but it depends again. What's it going to run into? Oh my goodness gracious me. No, just out of the count. That is one to the uh, Hastings Hornets. After that, Dean Drummond sprayed things around that, moved things around the head a bit. So Dean Drummond will be very, very keen to try and add another. On the backhand is Drummond trying to draw another to the counting area. It all depends on his speed now. He's not going to have enough speed. He's going to pull up short. But uh, it's still the one shot to the Hastings Hornets. So all locked up to all after three ends of five. And this is the second set here at the National Indicar Bowl Street Five Finals here in Dunedin. Oh, sorry, no, no, sorry. No, not in Dunedin this week. And... The power play, it was uh, so we'll see that. Uh, yeah, we'll see Suway change that board in but a moment, and so that makes it a two. And Dean Drummond down on his haunches there, just changing the board as we see this bowl of. And it is to a piece, as we said. Uh, yeah. And I think, is it uh, Hastings who have pulled the, the power play? An indication was a power play being played. We'll see him but a moment. So, Mike Seminoff. Good opening bowl here from the Ramadi lead. So Tanith Pondager endeavouring to beat her last bowl. She's got, she's got a good metre and a half down to the jack. And definitely this is a change of line. This How's this bowl looking as it comes down towards the head? Has it got weight to get all the way? Is it going to get all the way? Not quite. But another bowl, good bowl on the head for the... Hastings Hornets, and it's a measure. Uh, Sue Waite just indicating quickly there that it's a, a measure for shot. It's the turn now of Mike Simonoff. His second bowl now coming down to the head. His first one, a pretty good bowl, just over. 
What can you do with this one? And a run into the potage of bowl, pushes it on towards the jack. So, always a, so there it sits, Jack level, but it's imperative now for the for the uh, Hastings Hornets that they get another bowl on the head. And you saw there Dean Drummond saying to uh, uh, <coughs> Merv Brown to draw to the bowl just in behind there. That's the ideal jack and puts another good bowl on the head for the Hastings Hornets as we're all locked up two apiece. Two apiece after three of the five ends. And is this going to run all the way for Merv Brown? Needs to get past that front bowl. If Mike Semenov's not going to do so. And I'm sure here's the option here for uh, for Rob Nicholson. Try and play the shot now for uh, Trudy Nicholson. Don't be frightened. Play with weight. Reach up through there to the bowl. And trying to do just that is Nicholson. And looks to be on the wider side. And needed a more straight line to the jack for that. But Maywell sits up right underneath the number, so that's not all bad. Sits right under the number. And I'm sure Merv Brown will be aware of that. They hold the shot, and they need to have a position bow in case there right. is a runner that takes uh, that shot bow they've, out. They've got, a real, they've got a real dilemma here because the bowl goes out clean, and they're a couple down. It goes back, they're down, and this bowl's short, so they're in a real dilemma. Yeah, yeah this is a big end now. Jack movement favours the round Matty side. Dislodgement of the shot bowl certainly favours that of the, the round Matty side. So this is one of the few ends where they've had a chance to yeah, control the, the head, and this bowl's going to go by. Will it stay up? And it is going to stay up, is it? Is it go? Yes, it is. And so there's another one there sitting, although well, didn't get the target. Now, here for Rob Nicholson, he's got a great opportunity here. Either dislodges the bowl or gets the jack. Dean Drummond is going to be caught in between. What what shot do I play? Do I get to the back to give us some cover? What, because if one just dislodges the bowl, i still down a few. So. Dean Drummond making his way back to the mat. And this is the first end we've seen really, Kevin, in this match whereby on end four, where it's, although they haven't got the shot, but there is a situation where the Round Matty Blues have got, well, they've got a great opportunity. They certainly have. And uh, if their skip, Rob Nicholson, can get the right line and the right weight, as you said, there's a bowl there that can be plucked out of the head and they could get two or three shots. Yeah. Drummond needing to get past the bowl here is going to do just that. Going to get past the shot. Look at this, and Dean Drummond sits. He'll be, he won't mind that. He'll be quite happy with that. So the best result now is j the, the, the jack for Rob Nicholson. But would it go straight back into the ditch? I don't think it would now. So here's Nicholson on the mat. The tall Nicholson. Very deliberate. On the backhand, trying to get down to... What is the counting bowl? And it's going to go by on the wide side. There's a bit of a roulette wheel here, but that bowl of Dean Drummond's certainly. Yeah, he does have one other, but one more bowl to bowl, though, of course, Rob Nicholson. He was wide on that occasion, but I'm sure he's seen that. And if he adjusts his line, you know, there's still some opportunities to uh, knock out the shot bowl. I'm sure yeah, Dean Drummond. May well try and get actually to the jack on the draw and try and just move it fractionally, takes that shot away, and that's what they're talking about. That you know, it's a bit of a risk, sure, but it does take away some of the bigger um, possibilities of numbers, knowing now that they have got third shot after that first bowl of Drummond's. So here is Dean Drummond. It looks to be though on that wide side on the way down. Is it going to get to the the back of the rink is it going to hold up or not no it's not now here's the big bowl this is the big bowl for Rob Nicholson on this the fourth end all locked up to a piece and it's the Hastings Hornets who are holding the shot on this very very vital end remembering of course the Hastings Hornets winning the first set by 12 to 3 here now is Nicholson on the backhand trying to get to the shot bowl where he certainly got a different line this time. Now to get the front. Is he going to get the front 
ball. He does. Ah, going to get enough. No, Probably one. not. And it is a one. And won't be wiping their brow after that particular end because they were certainly in a position where they could have been uh, uh, in, in some trouble. So yes, They certainly were. And uh, it's just the... Um yeah, unfortunately uh, for Rob Nicholson, he couldn't uh, convert that shot as he was trying to do. So but we have a power play coming up here, which has been called for, I believe, must be the Hastings, Hastings team. They're ahead 3-2. Yeah, the black is called the power play. So they nullified, Hastings nullified the the Cabinet or the Ramity uh, um, power play. And now they hold the power play going into the end. So there's the first bowler, Tunneth Pottinger. Finishes Jack Level on this, the fifth end, the last end. Well, we don't know yet, of course. Could be a tie break in. Hastings Hornets winning the first set by 12 to 3. And now leading in the second set with their power play now underway, leading 3 2. As we watch now, Mike Seminoff, the lead for the Real Matty Blues side. And just not going to get all the way down, is it? No, it's. Oh, needs to get inside the circle. Tanith Pottinger is more than likely half a bowl wide of the circle, sitting jack level. So here she is now on her backhand. Is the the student commercial pilot out of the Wanganui um, Aero School. Look at that deliberate look that she has on it, always on that delivery on the backhand. And is it going to get the jack? Yes, it will get the jack. Well played by the young lead. Gets a tra look at that. Gets oh, a trail on the jack right under the number. Sits about nine inches below the jack. Yeah, looking there. And don't forget, of course, we'll have this afternoon's round five to eight this afternoon. And Brenda Van Nisseroy will be bringing you all of that action. And just go to the Bowls New Zealand website. And they can very, very quickly from the website there... Uh, link you onto one of the platforms whereby you can watch the live action. And, of course, also on the Bowls New Zealand website uh, is the round-by-round -round results, which will be up to see the progress uh, after round four. But the important thing with that bowl there of Tanith Pottinger on that being a power play in is it as a toucher. Oh, and it's it was a, a, and it was a it's great a, shot. A, well, it's on a direct line to the ditch as well. So yeah. if they do make contact, her bowl is going to go travel into the ditch as well so it's a really that to me is a big bowl from the the young uh, the young lead as we see brown trying to add to the head now will he get there no he won't i think uh Tenneth pottinger on that bowl that we just saw come down earlier and child the jack you know she was a study in concentration all the way through her delivery right to the end she watched the bowl the complete arcing through into the kitty. Well, Great example. My sake, it was a lesson, isn't it? There's an example there. Watch that and you see what I would just about... I'm not going to say it's the perfect delivery, but by goodness, um, it's as good as you'd want to see, really. Uh, and it would be important here for Drummond that they do get another bolt on the head. If they at least get another second shot around the head, it just reduces, of course, the shot options of which the Real Matty Blues can, can play as we watch this bolt of Move Browns go past us here, and is it just going to hang up all the way to the? It's going to hang up. It's going to sit up. Going to get to the board. It just rolls in one roll too many, and really, they've got to be playing for that to to do something with that touch. And now, really, Kevin to give themselves um, that scoring chance with the uh, skips two bowls. Be better if it was dislodged, dislodged now, which Trudy Nicholson's trying to do as we. See where her ball goes. There it is under the head. And yeah, the key thing is that stayed up on the it stayed up that, that ball. In fact, sitting just literally just lower the ditch. So it is important here for Dean Drummond that he gets another ball between that last ball that just came in and the number. Uh, just because then that re reduces, removes any two shot opportunities for the for the uh, Real Matty side because they scored two here. We go to, uh, one's no good to them. But no, no, it's certainly not. Dean Drummond will know that and uh, they're ahead 12-3 in the first set, ahead in the second set, 3-2. He'll just be playing a safe shot, trying to position the bowl that should the jack move off the uh, Tunneth Pottinger bowl, that they still 
are in this game and, and can uh, get a point or two. Well, that needs us to stay up and will do. Yeah, top bowl there. Just literally under the number. Uh, that reduces options there now. There you'll see the bowler Drummond sitting right underneath the number one as Rob Nicholson now endeavouring to get up to the jack with that counting bowl, that Tandith Pottinger shot bowl. Is going to get onto the brown bowl, is it? No, it gets onto the bowl of Trudy Nicholson. And his only chance is to drive those two bowls out and, st and, and stay there. A difficult assignment, I would imagine, Kieran. Oh, I believe so. I don't think... Uh, I'm not saying he's not capable of doing that, but it's a difficult uh, shot selection, and the Hastings team have made that a difficult shot selection by the placement of their bowls around the kitty. So here's now Dean Drummond. He's going to be well short. I don't think he's too worried, really, about that. doesn't want to give another bolt on the target <clears throat> so here now Rob Nicholson with what may well be his last bowl, we'll just wait and see whether this becomes his last bowl in this match searching down on his forehand, goes past us here in the commentary position trying to get to the jack, trying to get to something, just going to rub into the brown bowl, goes by and and it is one, it is one to the Hastings uh, Hornets. And they hold on by the narrowest of margins, really. They got, well, that was a two because, of course, they had the, the power. Uh, they had the, they played the power play then. So winning the second set, five shots to two. That's the team of Tanith Pottinger leading Merv Brown at number two and Dean Drummond skipping. And they're up against the Ramadi Blue side of Mike Simonoff, Trudy Nicholson and Rob Nicholson. Big thanks to our marker, Sue Wei, who kept us completely up to date uh, right throughout that match. So as you see, we've got the Hastings Hornets recording a win over the Ramadi Blues and we'll be back with round six very shortly and Brenda Van Nisseroy will be taking over the commentary. <laughs>